Funding for Firehouse Kitchen is brought to you by R.W. Prime. Good times, great steaks. Located at Resorts World, New York City. Murph's Famous Bloody Mary Mix. One sip, one believer, party with the Murph. Shallon Self-Defense Center. Classes for men, women, and children. Kick with the best. Fire News. Serving heroes since 1973. Gentle Dental. Located in Eastport, New York. Rene Dumay. Fine jewelry located in East Islip, New York. DiCarlo Food Service. Serving the food industry since 1963. Located in Farmingville, New York. Firefighter Ray, and we got a very cool show for you today. I am in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, at the Connecticut State Fire Academy. I'm here with Bill DeFord. It should really be the Bill DeFord episode because he's in everything this episode. And uh, we're here, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Windsor Locks. We're going to be cooking here at the fire department. Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about the fire academy. Sure. Fire Academy is in North Central Connecticut, and it was land that was owned by the state. That's how we ended up here. There are nine regional fire schools, but the Connecticut State Fire Academy is located here, and this is really the, the umbrella of all the other entities of training it within the state. And we do the most, and we do the most often, and here's where we hold recruit firefighter training, which is rookie school, or probie school, as most people would know. Okay, now to get into probie school, do I have to take a test? Like in New York City, New York City, we take a test. And then we called, you know, we got a waiting list, and then, you know, psychological screening, medical, and then we, then, then if we get in, we have our probie school in, uh, in Queens. This, the Connecticut State Fire Academy is like most other fire academies, state fire academies, in that a department will hire a firefighter, and they'll have to, their own battery of tests that they'll have to complete in order to be uh, hired by that department, and then that department will make application here, and they'll send their rookies here for training. Okay. So it works a little differently than a city academy would work. It's more like a state academy would run. So everywhere in the state, they come to this academy? Except for the larger cities who may have their own academy. Oh, so Hartford, State. Hartford, Waterbury, okay. correct, right. Okay. Most of the cities will have their own academy, although in the past handful of years, city departments have sent their recruits here because of the quality of the training and the fact that we're an established entity that runs two classes per year versus a city entity that might have to generate the means with which to run a rookie school. So if they haven't run a rookie school in a bunch of years, they'll have to bolster their training division so that they might send them here for that reason, that we're already established and we run two classes a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. Wonderful. Now today we're going to be making, well we're going to talk about it on the, on the show, but we're cooking for the probies tonight. We're cooking for the probies. Now this is a little unique. Most state fire academies don't do this, but ours is dormitory living. So the rookies arrive Monday morning at 8 a.m. and then they leave Friday afternoon at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. So while they're under our care, custody, and control, we teach them all elements of health, wellness, and fitness. So not only the fitness end of it that most people would expect that we would teach, but also the health and wellness pieces of it as well, which includes uh, healthy eating, healthy habits of living and healthy eating. So we're doing a meal, wow. and it coincides with a night class that we have tonight called Tools for a Healthy Career, so that they can bring what they've learned from here back into their firehouses. Wow. Wow, and they stay here and they go home on the weekends. They go home on the weekends. That's great, that's great. All right, so let's get into the kitchen and we're gonna start cooking on Firehouse Kitchen. Well, Bill, this is a beautiful kitchen you guys got here. Uh, that's a beautiful academy. Now, what Thank are we much. making for lunch? Here's what we do at the Connecticut Fire Academy. Every class that we have, rookie school, the academy, uh, recruit firefighter program, is 15 weeks. And throughout the 15 weeks, they not only learn physical fitness, they learn health, wellness, and fitness. So what we're doing today is we have a night class called Tools for a Healthy Career, from which they're gonna carry all the information they've gained in the last 10, 11 weeks. Okay. And then they can bring it into their firehouses when they go back uh, to the departments that have hired them. So what we're doing today is we're doing a meal like we would in a firehouse, just okay. like you've shown on 
a number of your shows, we're teaching them how to cook from basic, simple recipes, but very tasty type foods, and we're making the meal. So during the lunchtime now, they've already eaten their meal, but they're starting to prep for the dinner meal tonight. So what we have going on here is the chicken prep and the soup prep, because we want to marinate the chicken and we want the soup to cook all day. Well, that's how we do it in New York City, okay? We'll have our lunch, and then uh, the night crew will come in probably about three o'clock, uh, four o'clock with you, not probably, that's what time they do come in. Um, and when the shift starts at six o'clock, the first thing we ask is, what's for dinner? So uh, we'll go out, we load up to the rig, we all go to the supermarket together. I had to show that we did this. And we go around and we, we go for the meal. A lot of the guys are like, uh, you know, what do we have at dinner? Some guy will say, oh, can we have like a brisket or can we have salmon tonight? And I'm always like, what are you kidding me? We eat steak, we're in the firehouse. And uh, we pick up all the stuff, we come back to the firehouse, and we and this is exactly what we're doing. How are you guys all doing out there? Great, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, these guys are chopping. We got chicken, we got tomatoes, we got celery, we got onions. We got all kinds of stuff cooking right now. And uh, and before, they, there was a little bit of banter. They were busting shops. They were saying how Tommy over here, uh, this is the first time. I told him to slow down because we're getting ready to film. And they said that's the first time they ever asked him to slow down because he always does everything so fast. He's 100%. Isn't that right? With He's a hard worker. He's a very hard worker. Oh, good. Yeah. And uh, But that's what goes on in New York City. There's just a lot of uh, chops busted. I want to say another phrase, but that wouldn't be OK for TV. But uh, OK, so what are we making? What's going to be the meal tonight? What we're doing is we're prepping the chicken and the soup for the meal tonight. And what that means is that they're dividing the chicken breast so it can be marinated. It'll marinate all afternoon. And then they're prepping the soup. We're making a homemade minestrone soup okay. with a base using some. We're making our own stock from the chicken parts and the vegetable parts. And then we're going to have the minestrone soup cook all afternoon. We'll add some later ingredients at the end. Okay. So the meal tonight is going to be a minestrone soup, a garden salad with fruit mixed in and some nuts. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a grilled chicken sandwich. And then we're going to have a dessert that's made from yogurt, fruit, nuts. And then it's going to have pulverized chocolate on the top. So it's a multiple course meal. These guys right now are divided up between the platoon leader and the squad leaders okay. of this respective class. Tonight when we come back after training, the whole group is going to be in here, and they're all going to be delegated with some assignments. And who is the platoon leader here? Right here, sir. Oh. Who's that? Marcini? Marcin. 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 It's a nice Italian name. Is that Italian? That's Polish, sir. Polish. Polish, Polish name. Marcin, how did you earn that, that uh, title of platoon leader? Did you have to wrestle for it? I was lucky, sir. We want uh, rock, paper, scissors. scissors <laughs> so that's how you guys do things right here, rock, paper, scissors? No, actually, we, no, actually yeah. <laughs> we have an interview process for the platoon leader. Okay. And so he came in with a number of other candidates. We interviewed him, and then we selected the platoon leader. The squad leaders are selected by their individual squads, and then we select the platoon leader to lead the whole group. Oh. And then just like the firehouse, it's a chain of command. It's a paramilitary organization. Okay. So everything goes from the coordinators and instructors down to the platoon leader and the squad leaders. Okay. And we mimic the same thing when we're prepping the meal. All right, we got, the, we got our tomatoes cut up. Why can't we have some minestrone soup? It's delicious. It's a good one. Uh, we're, gonna, we're cutting up our chicken. We got celery. We got everything getting chopped. Let's go to a safety tip right now, and uh, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's safety tip is a reduced profile. I'm here at the Connecticut State Fire Academy with Firefighter Patrick Richards. What's up, Pat? All right, very good. Yeah, you can't understand him, he's got a mask on. Now, what Pat, Mr. Richards is going to do is he's going to pretend that we come across a confined space and he's got to get through it. And the way that we do it is by reducing our profile, by making ourselves thinner. Let's do it. He's going to get down, he's going to put on his mask, and he comes to the confined space. He's going to loosen his straps, he's going to grab that regulator hand, that's his air, with his left hand, and he's going to not, he's not going to let go, he's going to hold on to it. Because if that dislodges, we're in trouble. He's going to send his mask to the side, and he's going to make himself thinner. He's reducing his profile. All right, and then he goes right through. Stri check the stability of the floor, and voila. Firefighter Patrick Richards has done it. I'm Firefighter Ray, and these tips save lives. Hey, hon. Have I ever told you how much I love the Murph's Famous Bloody Mary mix? Yes, sweetheart. So bold, rich, thick. Wait until you try it on the pizza. Remember, with the Murph's, it's one sip, one believer. And apparently, a whole lot more. Was that the Murph in our kitchen? Murph's in every kitchen, Craig.
right, we sliced and diced some vegetables, and now we're gonna cut the chicken. Bill's got his own pretty cool way of cutting. Bill, tell me what we're gonna do. All we're doing is we brought chicken breast here only because we're gonna marinate it, so we know it'll be tender enough anyways. Okay. So what we're doing is just trimming it up. And it looks like this piece came out pretty good already. We've already trimmed the fat. So all we're doing is just taking any fat sections out of there. Okay. And then once I do that... And we all save all these fat We sections. save that because okay. we're running that through the... Uh, that's gonna be our broth. So the, it's gonna be the base for our soup. So all that I need to do is divide this into two. Then okay. I know I've got enough for a sandwich each. I'm gonna put it in our marinade, and then I'll take the piece that I took out, and then that'll go into to boil up to make our broth. So that's going in this pot right that's here. That's going in that pot. Look at all here. our giblets that we got there. Very nice, very nice. And that's actually going in with the leftovers of the chop and slice and the dice of the vegetables. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna make a stock. We're gonna make a base. All these little, I, all I have these little things. We don't waste anything. Neither do I. I have a beautiful little Dalmatian at home. And whenever we cu I cut chicken in the kitchen, that's it, I don't think I'm dog food that night. All right, so anyway, this is our marinade, okay? It smells delicious, even though I'm looking at it right now, it looks like something you might see at an operating table, like Jack the Ripper's house. But uh, what, do we, uh, what, what do we have in our marinade? First of all, it looks better as the day goes on. What we have here is balsamic <laughs> vinegar, we have olive oil, and then we have some uh, Dijon mustard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the spices, which essentially come from an herb garden, my herb garden, and you take them and you just pulverize them through the heels yeah. of your hands, and then that makes like sawdust. So like when you think of how a fire starts, yeah. and the surface area, yeah. smaller surface area, the more you get out of it. Same with flavoring in our marinade. So that'll marinate all afternoon, and then when we're done, this will go on the grill now, later wait, on the where day. Where did you get this? These, this, is a, this is a delicious marinade. Where did this come from? Actually, this is Oklahoma State University. I went there for my pure fitness training class. And okay. in their class, they actually have a kitchen. And what is, well, before we go into that, what is the Pure Fitness Training? Pure Fitness Training is through the IFF and the IFC okay. Wellness Fitness Initiative that started in the mid 90s. Okay. One element of that was CPAT, Candidate Physical Abilities Testing Process. Mm -hmm. And then the other was Pure Fitness Trainers in every firehouse. Okay. And they're, they're working toward that goal. So if you're a Pure Fitness Trainer, you're, you're essentially trained as a personal trainer specifically for the fire. For the firefighters. And part of that includes nutrition, obviously. Okay, so you can give so, me some tips on how I can get rid of my fire. We can give uh, you some tips. My fire. And here's, that's exactly why we're doing it here, is that firefighters, when they get back to their firehouse, they learn the meat and the potatoes pretty quickly. Okay. What we need them to learn for the future firefighter is how you balance the meat and potatoes with other things that'll keep you healthy for your whole career. Okay, so. We're all set with our marinade? We're all set with the marinade. Okay. So this will, this will sit for the afternoon in the cooler. Okay. And then we'll fire up the grill and we're done with our afternoon training. Come back and get at this on the grill. All right, so why don't we uh, go outside and we'll do some training. Uh, you can put me through some, maybe some drills. We'll see if I... Uh... We're doing fire ground survival today. So it's actually a good day to combine it with the nutritional piece, good. how you survive on the fire ground. We're teaching you how to survive in the firehouse. We'll go out and teach you how to survive on the fire ground. I love it. All right, let's go outside. All right, now, Cap, I know I said I was gonna do some of these drills, but I'm looking at this optimal course, and with my prosthetic hip, I don't think I can get through there right now. But uh, we, we have firefighter Patrick Richards going through. Can you explain to us, as he goes through right now, what exactly he's doing? Sure. This is a confidence building course, really. As you know from being in the fire service for as long as you were, and, and all the guys you know on the job, and women as well, uh, you're not likely to get into this scenario where you're going to have to crawl as far as Patrick is going to have to crawl. So it's really an SCBA confidence drill. What he's going to go through first is what we call a reduced profile. So he's got to be narrow. Once he gets through that, and he can use one of several techniques, a swim technique or a reduced passage technique. Once he goes through that, then he's going to go through the low profile. And for that, we have a tube. I think it's 22 inches. He's got to go through the low profile. Again, if he can go through with his pack on, he will. But part of his size up is going to determine whether or not he can. Mm -hmm. In this case, Patrick knows he can't. We've done this before. He realizes that he has to do a restricted passage horizontal, or what we call low profile. The pack is going to come off, and then he's going to go through the tube. Mm -hmm. Once he gets through that tube, he has to continue to size up the whole prop. When he gets through the tube, he's got to redon his air pack. Once he redons the air pack, he's going to come up and crawl across what we would know as floor joists. Basically, he's just got the two by eights, and he's got to slide along those to get to the next part of the obstacle. When he gets to the end of that, he's going to make a 180 degree turn, where what we have is an angled part of the prop, like a knee wall, and he's going to go under that. And it's got wires, as though there were wires in an attic or something like that, and he's going to go across the ceiling joists. Once he gets across the ceiling joist, navigating underneath the wire, hopefully not getting caught up, he's then gonna drop down a level where that tube was, and he's gonna go parallel to the tube under two collapse sections. 
the first collapse section has wires and rope. And what they've learned to do is recognize that if there's a collapse, there may be a void space, a triangular shaped void space where the wall and the floor meet. They know to put the bottle in that corner and then use a swim technique where they're fishing ahead of them for any wires or any obstructions, passing them over their BA and then making progress forward. When he finishes that section, he's again got to make a 180 degree turn and then he's got a wood collapse section. For that, he's going to orient his bottle again to that area where there may be a void and he's going to work his way ahead holding the obstructions above his head as he goes through. Yeah. This typically takes between about 10 and 15 minutes per recruit to go through. And this is the first time they've seen the prop in its, in its totality. They've gone through sections before. Mm -hmm. So in Patrick's case, as you're watching here, it's taking him about 15 minutes to go through. He's got a 30 minute bottle on his back. And as you know, those bottles are rated for 30 minutes. It's sort of a resting rate, rate of about 40 liters per minute. Once Patrick's working, you see that he's exerting himself. He has no choice. He's got to move his body weight with the air pack. So his gear and his body weight, he's adding about 60 pounds of excess weight. So he's working a lot harder. So that bottle for him is probably about 15 minutes to get to the Vibro Alert. As in the case of Patrick, we saw because we had done some other work before with him before he went into the prop, he was actually using a lot of air. When he got to the end, the other part of his training here is what happens when your Vibro Alert goes off? How much air do you have left? We know if we're in a fire, we want to get out before that Vibro Alert goes off. But what happens if you couldn't? So now how do you manage your air? So we got to see a unique circumstance here where not only did his Vibro Alert go off, but he used all of the air through that last 20 to 25% of his cylinder so that he had to then figure out how much air he had left when his Vibro Alert stopped going off. And in most cases, that could be five breaths to 15 or 20 breaths. He got 14 breaths after he had been working as hard as he worked, which is a phenomenal success. And that's a great training evolution for Patrick. Wonderful. I thought it was it was unbelievable. Yeah, his I, skills yeah. were flawless. That's exactly, those are the techniques we hope to see. He'll be rated very high today mm -hmm. on his performance at this station because of his actions. And you saw when he came out, he, he was, was gassed. That was gassed. Was, that's what yeah. firefighters do. This is no joke. People, this is no joke. People don't understand right. what we go through. That's right. You know, in order to prepare to try to get out and save somebody's life. That's you right. know, you know, and if you're if you're unprepared, you know, if Patrick didn't know what he was doing and that was a real situation, he, he would right. he would have perished in that fire. This place is unbelievable. This Thank is you. some fire academy. I mean, just this course alone, I've never seen anything like this. I, it, this has got to be one of the hardest training things I've, I've seen so far. Um, but I am getting hungry. I'm getting hungry too. All right, and so as you'll notice, we do an awful lot here. We're, we're creative like all fire departments and all yeah. fire academies. So we're real excited by what we have, but we're really more excited about going in, finishing the dinner prep, and let's have a good meal with the brothers and sisters. That sounds great, let's go. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray. And today's fire fact is the SCBA, the self-contained breathing apparatus. I'm here with Firefighter Rayola. How you doing? How you doing, what's your first name? John. John, John Rayola, nice name, good. Nice Irish name, right? And Italian. Yeah, I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, you're, this is the, state, the Connecticut State Fire Academy. Yes. And you just did the course. Yes. Okay? Now, what he's wearing is the SCBA, as I said before. The self-contained breathing apparatus, has, he has a 30-minute bottle on. Now, what's cool about this is if he was sitting quietly in his home, breathing through the mask, it would take 30 minutes. Yeah. But when you get into a sticky situation, your heart starts racing, you start breathing faster, whatever usually the time our bottles are, the, the breathing bottle, that's how much time we have to breathe. So a 30 minute bottle is actually a 15 minute bottle. And you hear that little rumbling noise? That's the noise it makes when you start to run out of air. And when that starts to happen, we want to get out and get out fast. I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's fire fact is the SCBA self-contained breathing apparatus. Hey, hon. Have I ever told you how much I love the Murph's Famous Bloody Mary mix? Yes, sweetheart. So bold, rich, thick. Yeah, and honestly, these wings with Murph's, oh, they're awesome. Remember with the Murph's, it's one sip, one believer, and apparently a whole lot more. Is that the Murph in our kitchen? The Murph's in every kitchen, Craig. Well, this smells delicious. I got, we got the men eating behind us. Uh, and I got, a couple of women. And a couple of women. Oh, yeah, we got, that's right, we got three girls and the, three women in the, uh, in the fire academy. Now, I got so busy 
going around the fire academy doing safety tips and fire packs. You guys started cooking without us, and we came in, and you were like, hey, Ray, uh, we're, we're good ready, to go. We're ready to eat. So, for America, let's explain our, our, our dinner and just and how it all went about. So we're gonna start with our salad. Sure, so what we did to finish the prep was they made a uh, raspberry vinaigrette, Dijon mustard dressing, homemade. Okay. Then they finished chopping vegetables and fruits, and then we added some nuts to it as well. So how many, how many guys worked on the salad? We had a group of six working on the salad. Six guys uh, making the salad, awesome, okay. Then we have our delicious soup. We already Minnesota pretty much soup. Talked about the ingredients and whatnot. Right. And uh, we use the chicken fat, yep. right? And that, that some of that. This is your own little special recipe. This is my own little special from, recipe. From Ohio State? Nope, this one's actually different. This one's from home. This is from the home, only, okay. Yeah, the only thing we've modified over the years is that we make our own stock. So rather than buying a beef or a chicken or a vegetable broth, we make our own out of all the extras that we all have. All the chicken from, parts. The chicken parts and the vegetable parts. We boil that and then we um, dump the, the water into the base, into the soup and that's how we finish it. Then the end of the soup is we had ditalini, a little bit of pasta, and then grated cheese. A little bit of ditalini? A little bit of ditalini. So that's how pasta. we end with the soup. A little bit of cheese. I like a little bit that. of cheese. I like that. All right, then of course our chicken sandwich. Grilled chicken sandwich. Looks like the marinade worked out really well. Oh, These guys goodness. had the grill fired up in the back, pouring rain outside, but that didn't stop them because we're firefighters. Well, it's one, you know, we got a little bit of B-roll out there, but yeah, I, I didn't want to stand out. I didn't want to stand out in the rain with that. <laughs> So we've got the grilled chicken, we've got lettuce, tomato, and cheese, and then on a multi-grain bread. Unbelievable. And now our delicious dessert, what do we have this here? Is, this is a homemade recipe as well. This is basically Greek yogurt, and it's not flavored. And then we add fruit to it, chopped up fruit, chopped up nuts, and then we cover the top with a pulverized dark chocolate. So what, like the, with protein just in this in this meal. So right. uh, I, I would think probably the healthiest is the soup, right, that, that's in this. Yeah. Well, because it's all vegetable based and we've yeah. got a lot of protein in there. So mm -hmm. we've got a lot of protein in the base, including beans, okay. kidney beans, things like that. That yeah. makes for the protein. Okay. But if you look at the grilled chicken sandwich, the grilled chicken, marinated, healthy marinade. I know. Uh... So in terms of the protein, you look around and you say, what do you got for protein? You know, you got the Greek yogurt, you know, you got the nuts, mm -hmm. you know, you got the chicken, you know, you've got the beans and a lot in the soup. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, you know that between nuts, grains, uh, you know, protein yeah. and the meat. That's how you get the protein. I carbohydrates like is everything else. All the fruits, vegetables, anything else you get, it's mm -hmm. gonna be carbohydrates. Fat is mostly gonna be in some in the yeah, it's just in the, soup. the natural the chicken, which is good fat. Because we put it in there, yeah. right? And then in addition to that, the nuts, healthy fats. Mm -hmm. So that's how we come up with the fat. I absolutely love it. All right, let's let's, let's try it. Ready to go? Salad first. Let's see how we go. I think I'm gonna start with the soup while you're enjoying that salad. Oh. Salad. Delicious salad. Mm. Those six guys did a great job. <laughs> All right. Now, now here's soup. really the test. For a guy who's lived and eaten in a firehouse, where the guys in the firehouse say, wow, that's good soup, mm -hmm. that's good salad, I'd have that. It's not too much of a stretch to try to make an athlete out of firefighters by serving this kind of food. This is good soup. This good is soup. really good soup. It's got a really nice taste. I can taste that cheese right at the end. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. And what we didn't talk about with the soup, the reason we make that stock and the reason we make that base the way that we do, any of the other bases that you would buy or stocks, whether it's vegetable, chicken, or beef, loaded with sodium. Mm -hmm. So if you say, well, what's the sodium really do for you? It's a flavoring. So what we did was we added flavoring with the spices. We did your own. We did our own. Instead of putting all that sodium right. in us and retaining all that water, you know, this is just, uh, this is, I don't know, I'm going for the chicken sandwich. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. waiting. And the bread, look at this bread, man. You guys eat this good all the time? And, and the Connecticut State Pot of <laughs> I can't speak for everybody, but we try here at the Connecticut Fire Academy to eat this well. It's perfect. They're good? Absolutely perfect. Good. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. And so healthy. And so healthy. All right, now I got this dessert while I'm here. Yeah, you know, I was going to go right to the dessert. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. All righty. Is that pretty good? Oh, man. Mr. DeFord. No, I tell you, people Unbelievable. would think, people don't normally, they're not drawn to Greek yogurt, especially plain Greek yogurt. But if you add what you want, I'm gonna actually use my soup spoon for this. I thought he was gonna put some soup on his yogurt. Yeah, if That's you add what do, you my want, wife would go gross. Good. and you taste that, it's like somebody flavored it for you, and you're like, mm -hmm. this is really Greek yogurt? It is, unbelievable. Mm. Now, I used to fight, and um, you know, I was always, I always had to suck weight and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I didn't eat. Delicious. I just eat right. protein. Right. This is something I can get get into. 
eating, eating this good all the time. You know, we don't have to have five sticks of butter in my mashed potatoes. You know, we can use our own chicken stock. You know, this is very, very good. Captain, your email, phone calls, it brought me here. You know, this is probably one of the most involved shows that we've done. Um, definitely the biggest, you know, going to a fire academy, the state fire academy. Thank you so much. You're Very informative. I think America got a lot about food, a lot about fire training. We got some great safety tips. And um, I will come back here anytime. We'll be anytime. glad to have you back. Awesome. Awesome. To find out more about Firehouse Kitchen, go to firehousekitchenshow.com. Now, let's see how these recruits do. All right? Can we see how these guys do? All right, ready? Let's see. Recruits! Yes, sir! Attention on deck! And we will see you next time on... Firehouse Kitchen! All right! All right, thank you, Bill. Unbelievable. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Very cool. Okay. Awesome. Funding for Firehouse Kitchen is brought to you by R.W. Prime. Good times, great steaks. Located at Resorts World, New York City. Murph's Famous Bloody Mary Mix. One sip, one believer, party with the Murph. Shallon Self-Defense Center. Classes for men, women, and children. Kick with the best. Fire News. Serving heroes since 1973. Gentle Dental. Located in Eastport, New York. Rene Dumay. Fine jewelry located in East Islip, New York. DiCarlo Food Service. Serving the food industry since 1963. Located in Farmingville, New York. Now you can enjoy Firehouse Kitchen at your own leisure with Firehouse Kitchen DVDs. Rewatch your favorite recipes and stories with this DVD collection.